He's an excellent lawyer. I have hired him myself, and he is great help to us. Another rule, I think Chris Antone's gone, but another rule that lawyers always say is you never represent yourself because your client's a jerk. And uh, it's definitely true. Jim is an amazing attorney, an amazing person. And he is now also teaching in law school and at TCU. And he is willing and, and um, so generous with his time to help share with us the uses, limitations of artificial intelligence. And I give you Jim Zeta. Thank you all for having me. Um, I'm also a yoga instructor. And last night I taught about 55 students, so I'd feel more comfortable if we all got on the yoga mats right now and started that way. Um, so I'm going to start out with this with some questions because I want to gauge my audience and see where we're at. How many of you have used ChatGPT? Love it. How many of you have a subscription to ChatGPT? Uh, now, we get, now we're getting into it, right? All right. How many of you have used Claude? Nope. How many of you have a subscription to Claude? All right. Do you all remember when we had uh, vaccines and we had Moderna and we had Pfizer and then we had that other one, Johnson & Johnson? Right? Remember that? Right now, Google, who's way behind in artificial intelligence, has Gemini. They are the Johnson & Johnson of artificial intelligence. <laughs> How many of you have used Gemini? Yeah, see? Johnson & Johnson. All right. Um, how many of you work for a company that has an internal chat GPT? Not a one. A one. I see one. All right. How many of you are afraid of artificial intelligence? Okay. I appreciate that. And I really appreciate the honesty because what I'm, what I'm going to try and do for you today is I'm going to walk through what it is, talk to you about how to get it, because I've been, I've talked at many seminars, I've seen many seminars, and I always go, how do you get it? How do you use it, right? Because I think that's something that they don't teach. They just go to this high level and they never get down and teach you the basics. And then I'm gonna show you some of the uses um, and specifically how it's used for HR. And then we're gonna talk about um, specific recommendations I have for each one of you and how you can make it work for you. And then we're gonna have a little bit of fun and talk about what I think the future is, the future of AI. So I think about so if I want to talk about artificial intelligence generally, I could, it would take forever. So I'm going to focus on the one part called the large language model. And what a large language model is, is all it is is it's learning. It's like a brain, and I want you to think of it like a brain. So when I talk about chat GPT, or I talk about Gemini, or I talk about Claude, what that is is it's a consumer giving you access to the brain that these companies have created. And they're creating this brain, and where they're getting their information from with these large language models is where's the most language is the internet. And so they're scraping everything off the internet and they're putting it into a brain. That's a large language model and you hear people talk about LLMs and that's the way to think about it. And what a large language model does is it anticipates the next word that would normally happen when you, when you give it a question or a prompt. That's what, how large language models work. And people say, well, that's not realistic. But then if you think when we speak, we're always thinking of the next word that we're saying when we speak, and it becomes pretty natural to us. So it really is kind of like a brain. That's one way to look at it. The second way to look at it um, is the progression that the large language model has made. You look at it like how it can do a task. So anybody who had a calculator in school knows that artificial intelligence, which is a calculator, can do a calculation better than a human. And so artificial intelligence started when we went with one task. Can it do more than one human task? And the answer to that is yes. By the way, as we're going through this, if you have any questions, raise your hand. Julie is around. I'll answer them while we do it, or I'll do it after. I don't care. Either way, it's fine with me. Um, then we have what's called artificial general intelligence, which is AGI. And AGI means that the computer can do the task more than 50% of the humans, right? And then we have the holy grail, artificial superintelligence, ASI, where the computer can do one human task better than any human. We reach that in, for example, there's examples out there. We reached that with chess. In the late 1900s, early 2000s, IBM Watson, B 
beat the world champion in chess. We reached artificial superintelligence as to chess. There's a much more complicated game called Go. It's played out in Asia a lot. And in the late 2000 teens, there was a, a game between ChatGPT and Go, or artificial intelligence and Go, and there were some moves that the computer made that everybody laughed at while it was making it. But then guess what? It beat the world champion. And it re achieved artificial superintelligence as to this complex game called Go. So we've reached ASI on several human tasks. Then we go to all human tasks, right? Can the computer, can this large language model do more than all, uh, in all human tasks, more than one human? Right now it can because old people, young people, things like that, it can do it. But now, can it do all human tasks 50%, more than 50% of humans? Artificial general intelligence. Everything got quiet, right? If we can get to AGI, we're like, oh, if we get to AGI and this thing can do more than 50% of humans, how are we going to have a job? We'll talk about that in a second. But AGI is coming. AGI will be here. And I majored in math in college. I, I love math and science and data, and I do, my, I do talks on this. I am not a true believer on artificial intelligence, by the way. I'm not here telling you it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I try to be on the cutting edge of technology for my firm, for my clients, but I'm not somebody who's just going to try and sell you on all this stuff. I'm trying to educate you on what's out there. But 2026, we're going to reach AGI. And I'll explain how we're going to get there in a second. And then artificial superintelligence, a guy named Ray Kurzweil who we'll talk about, he's predicting 2045 will reach ASI. 2045, we will have a large language model that has more knowledge than all human beings combined. And imagine the things that would happen. That's when I'm going to have fun at the end with it. So how can that be, Jim? How can it be? And I had one prop. It's a dime. That's my prop. Some of you know Mike Coffee. Yeah, every last of Mike Coffee. So Mike and I are very, very, very close friends. And we have, um, neither of us play golf. And so I always thought, well, if Mike and I play golf, what would happen? And I imagine I'd beat him on every hole. And he'd get mad, because that's the way Mike is. So <laughs> what we would do is we would go ahead and bet. And I want to use that, the, the analogy of betting to talk about artificial intelligence. We would bet 10 cents a hole, a dime a hole. And if we did that for the 18 holes, and I beat Mike on all 18, he'd owe me $1.80. He'd get mad, want to do it again. I'd beat him 18 more holes, and he'd owe me $3.60, right? That is just straight line revenue for a business. That's just straight line. Now imagine if we went 10 cents to 20 cents to 30 cents. So first hole's 10 cents, second hole's 20 cents, third hole's 30 cents, like that. At the end of 18 holes, Mike would owe me $17. At the end of 36 holes, Mike would owe me $66. That's just general growth, straight line growth. Now, imagine we double every time. First hole is 10 cents, second hole is 20 cents, third hole is 40 cents, fourth hole is 80 cents. At the end of 18 holes, Mike would owe me $13,000. At the end of 36 holes, Mike would owe me $687 billion. That is exponential growth. That's the difference between no growth, straight line growth, and exponential growth. We are on an exponential growth curve right now with, with the large language model. And we are at, ChatGPT was introduced in November of 2022. That's the first time consumers had the ability to get it. We are in April 2024, that is 18 months. We are on the 18th hole. We're at $13,000. We'll be in 18 months, we'll be in 2026, and we'll be at $687 billion. That's how fast this thing is growing. That's where you hear the hype, right? There are some limitations on it. There are some limitations that'll come into play. We don't have enough chips right now to do that. It requires a lot of energy to do artificial intelligence. There are some physical limitations that will probably prevent us from getting to $687 billion, but the science is there and the math is there to get us there, okay? So how do you get it? 
How do you get to the large language model? That is the landing page for ChatGPT. That's the page that if you go on, so ChatGPT was started as open.ai. OpenAI, open meant open source, and the intent of it was to make this source available to everybody. But as I always say, never underestimate the greed of the American executive. And once they started to realize the money that was available for this artificial intelligence, then they started to charge for it. And OpenAI, which is owned 49% by Microsoft, so you got Bill Gates, and it's run by a guy named Sam Altman, it now has a market cap of $80 billion. That's what OpenAI has. And this is the landing page, and on the bottom of it is what's called a search or a prompt. And that's the term, prompt. They don't say search now, you say prompt. And there are people now who are prompt engineers. That's their job title, is they figure out the prompt, and I'll show you the art and science of how to do a prompt. If you go on there, there's a version called 3.5 that is free. As with any free version, it's not great, but you can play with it and you can use it. If you go to 4.0, which is where it is right now, 4.0, you can go and you get that. You also get what's called Dolly, D-A-L-L apostrophe E, and that allows you to do text to image. So if you have something you want to see, if, if whatever you want to see, you put that text in and it creates an image. That's called Dolly. All right, that's ChatGPT. Now, how much does it cost? They'll tell you. I'll get it up here. It is $0 for the beginning plan and $20 a month for the subscription. I subscribe, I pay $20 a month. If you want to do a business, you can have $25 per seat. And if you want to create an internal chat, chat GPT, call our sales office. <laughs> it's going to be expensive. It's going to cost a lot of money. All right? And that's where they're going to make their money. So that's the pricing for... But that's the pricing for ChatGPT, and that's how you get it. You just go into your, into, into your uh, Google and say open.ai or ChatGPT, and it'll come up with that first page I show you. You set, or you set up a small account, you get the account set up, and boom, you're in. And you play. You go into that, that prompt bar, and you just play with it. Don't be afraid. Really, I'm telling you, don't be afraid. It's amazing what this thing can do. So this next one is Claude. Claude is run by a company called Anthropic. Anthropic is owned by Amazon, Jeff Bezos. Okay? This is the one that I, I, I did right here. Um, this is my landing page. And the search bar is on the up, right under the Good, uh, Good Evening Jim. It's on the top there. That's your search bar. That's when you get into Claude. All you have to do is put in Claude, C-L-A-U-D-E, type that, put in an account. This is your page. It gives you your search history if you want. And one of my search histories on there was summarize a criminal transcript. Because we represent a, 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 a teenager who was raped at, at a, um, the train station here recently by a security guard. Um, he was convicted, and unfortunately that security guard had previously been convicted in Louisiana twice of sexual assault of a minor, and they still hired and didn't do a background check. Right? They used publicdata.com to do background check, and they didn't do a very good job. So we have the criminal transcript, but it was 1,000 pages long. And I didn't want to read all 1,000 pages, and so I said, there's a, there's a paper clip up there you can attach. And I attached a 1,000-page transcript, and I said, please summarize the key witness's testimony. And within 30 seconds, it gave me the summary of the key witness testimony. Yes? We'll, call, we'll get to the limitations. Yeah, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. You, we're we're going to get what the limitations are. This is... It was about this one. Yeah. You're, you're all into the limitations. I love it. We'll get to that, but go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> go ahead. There are problems with this, and I'm, not, I'm just telling you how to get it. And I love these questions. And you all are smart people, and you're going, but wait a minute. We're HR. We know that there's a problem here. And there are, and we'll get to that limitations. Right now, I'm just teaching you how to get it. Yeah. In Microsoft, they have the co-pilot. Is that similar to the GPT? The co-pilot is the assistant. A lot of you are going to have what's called AI assistants right there. Remember the little paperclip we used to have? It's going to be super smart paperclip is what it's going to be. <laughs> all right? That's what co-pilot's going to be. 
and, and that's a good question. The one thing I haven't talked about is Apple. We don't know what Apple is doing right now. They're doing a lot of stuff, but we don't know. They published some white papers. The theory right now is that Siri is going to be like Copilot, except it's going to be better than Copilot. That's the theory as to what's going on with Apple right now. So the next one you have, and pricing for Claude, they make it hard, but it really is 20 bucks a month. You will hear things um, price per token. Just I want you all to understand what token means, T-O-K-E-N. What it means, for, just for shorthand, is word. So if you do a search, it, it gives you a million words or a million tokens. Really, when you, it also counts spaces and stuff, so it's really about 750 words for 1,000 tokens. But if you're getting price per token, but it really works out to about 20 bucks a month. And then you've got the Johnson & Johnson. <laughs> you've got Google. You know, about five years ago, Google recognized the train was coming down the tracks and that, that, search engine may, that, that the Google search engine may become less relevant. They sent out a red flag moment, memo to all their superiors and they've been trying really hard to catch up, but I'll tell you how they've screwed up pretty bad. Here's Google's pricing, which is Gemini, which is $19.99. It would be penny less. They're trying to make it, make it work. So that's how you get it, all right? This is a search I did. You know, I've, been, I've had my own law firm. I have nine employees. I don't have an employee handbook. The cobbler's son has no shoes. Blacksmith's son has no sword. I have no employee handbook. So I said, I, maybe I'll go ahead and do it. I'm going to turn, and, and here's where the art of the search comes in. The art of the search is you have to give a lot of context. The more context you give, the better the search or the prompt is. So I'm an attorney. I have nine uh, employees that work for me. I am trying to do an employee handbook. Will you please give me a table of contents for an employee handbook applying federal law and Texas law? And this is funny. I always say please. And the reason why I say please is because when it achieves artificial superintelligence and decides that there's too many parasitical humans on the, on the earth, maybe it'll spare the Fort Worth one who said please all the time. That's what I'm hoping for. So I say please it, and it gave me that table of contents, and it goes for two pages. Um, it gave me that table of contents, and it was really good, right? It was really good. Now, in the lower right-hand corner, you can't see, but there's a button called Retry. And if you don't like what you see, you push the button Retry. And like a brain, it'll redo it, but like a brain, it's not exactly the same. And you could hit Retry 10 times and have 10 different versions. So you're not, you don't have to be satisfied with your first search. And then they have the, the Copy button, and that's the Great button. You can just copy it and put it in a Word document. If you wanted to do an update of your employee handbook, put it into Claude, update my employee handbook. It'll do it in 30 seconds. If you want to take all your onboarding paperwork and say to Claude, hey, Claude, can you update my onboarding paperwork applying federal law and Texas law? It'll do it. We'll talk about some more uses, just giving you some ideas. So. In addition to AI, you have products using AI. OpenAI, which is the one that does ChatGPT, came out with a product called Sora. I don't know if anybody's seen the videos, but Sora is text-to-video. In other words, you can say what you want to see, and it'll create a video of it. So the one that's really popular is called Ships in a Cup of Coffee, and they have these ships floating in a cup of coffee, and I would show it, but I didn't put video on this. It's absolutely amazing. It's stunning what this thing can do. It is stunning what this can do. Midjourney is another text-to-picture, text-to-video product. And then the next four, Munch, Jasper, Kick Resume, and Addy.ai are all writing. They help you with So if you've got a resume and you want to get it better, put it in Kick Resume. It'll make your resume so much better. Addy.ai is a product that you can use for your emails. So listen to this. I've kept my emails for the last 10 years, my sent emails. It goes ahead and learns how I talk. It automatically responds to my email for me, preparing the response based on 10 years of the way I respond. And if I like it, I hit send. 80% of the time it works. Addy.ai, and also Grammarly is the same. 
There are other products out there that do that. The last two, to me and Canva, those are presentation softwares that use artificial intelligence. Now, what you're seeing now, if you go to a conference, if you go to a legal conference, or any conference, everybody has AI in their product, right? And so what you, oh, first, before I get to that, I wanna talk about the company ChatGPT. There, what's happening now, I'll put it in, the, in the, what's going on in a law firm right now. There's a law firm out there, DLA Piper, which is, a, which is a, one of the top 100 law firms in the country. They have hired 14 attorneys and 100 data scientists, and their sole job is to create their own GPT. They already get it. ChatGPT will let you do this. That was that enterprise version. They'll give you the brain, and you can create your own internal brain with all your internal information and layer it on top of the LLM on the brain that's out there. So you can take all your proprietary information, and it's protected in this internal chat GPT, and you can create that internal brain, and that brain then can use the brain that's out there in the real world, and they can learn together and work together. Can you imagine the power of a 50-year law firm that can take in every memo that was done, every email that was done, everything that they've done from 100 offices all throughout the country, and you, as there, have access to that and can type in a prompt, and it can do a brief for you, it can do a memo for you, it can do anything, a transaction, a merger, an acquisition, in 10 minutes, in five minutes. Companies are building internal company chat GPTs. Your companies will build one of these. Not may, will. Yes. We're, okay. How do we know they're right? How do we know they're right? You don't. Sorry. Right? It's called hallucinations. And that's one of the limitations we'll get to. Again, I'm teaching, teaching you how to get it and how it's going to be used, and then I'm going to tell you what the limitations are. Um, but that's what's coming. Internal company chat GPTs. What you have to be aware of is what I call, what is called AI washing or AI chat GPT wrappers. So there is a leak, just to give you an example, we have case management software and the company was trying to sell us and say we have AI. I'm like, what's your AI? And they say, well, you, we take all the information that you have in your case management system and you do this drop down screen and you say draft a complaint and it'll draft the complaint for you. Well, how much is that? Well, it's $150 a month per user. Well, why can't I just take that information and go out to ChatGPT and do it myself? Well, you don't have this drop-down screen here, right here, right? That's what's happening. So when people are saying they want to be able to say that their products have AI in them, but they're not really AI products. So you, if you are at all involved in the purchasing for your company, have to thoroughly investigate that product to determine whether the AI is there. Keep in mind, we're going to be at $687 billion. These products now that are just putting in a little AI are going to be outdated in six months to a year. You're going to be able to do that yourself. So watch very carefully when people are selling you on AI. So let's talk about, you all want to talk about the limitations because you're HR, I want to talk about limitations. First one is hallucinations. It gets it wrong. It's like a human brain. It makes mistakes. The internet gets things wrong. We've all learned that, and that's where it's learning from is the internet, right? The, the examples that we have in the law, lawyers are stupid. We are. We, we sometimes we just think we want to do the easiest thing. And so there's a lot of lawyers who practice in state court but don't like to practice in federal court. And there was this poor guy in New York who had his case moved from state court to federal court. He didn't know how to respond to a federal court motion to dismiss, and he asked ChatGPT to do it for him. Okay? And it made up rules of law, and it made up case citations. All right? Defense attorney picked up on it and told the court, and the court said, hey, plaintiff's attorney, where did you get those information from? And what do you think he did? He went back to ChatGPT and said, where did we get this information from? And it made up more stuff. <laughs> it's true. And so that lawyer then was called in front of the judge in a contempt of court hearing to figure out what he did. And he got on the stand and he said, I'm going to say this for the next two hours. I didn't understand artificial intelligence and chat GPT. That's right. You all have to learn it. You have to understand it. 
And I'm sorry to tell you that. That's, that, that's not the fun part of what I'm, I'm having to tell y'all. So he ended up getting sanctioned $5,000, but his reputation was worse, was really got damaged heavily. What ended up happening, though, is every month now, there's another lawyer who's making the same mistake. And they're getting sanctioned or they're getting disbarred from practicing in that court. And it happens, you're seeing a story about it every single month, that they're just being lazy about it, right? The other hallucination that kind of near and dear to my heart, one of the classes I teach, and it does include employment law, and there was a professor who had on there that he had written a book about sexual harassment, and that was one of the things he taught about. And when ChatGPT wrote out his biography, it said that he had been charged with sexual harassment. <laughs> Not a good day for him. So it makes mistakes. So you have to trust but verify. Anything in my office that AI is used on, we have human eyes look at it. And that's what you have to have, is have to have human eyes look at it. Now it's going to, as it goes from $13,000 to $687 billion, it is going to get smarter and it's gonna be less and less hallucinations. But right now that is a huge limitation of artificial intelligence. Sorry, do it one more time, there we go. Confidentiality, right? Right now, because of the fact, well, we'll get into the laws in a minute, but there aren't any real regulations on this stuff right now. And so the corporations themselves are the ones that we're relying on to police it. And what these corporations are doing, the ones that I told you about, is there are humans who are looking at virtually every questionable search that's out there. If the search relates to violence, if it has relates to sexual content, Contact, conduct, if it relates to national security, then they do not allow that search to go forward. But that means that every search that is being made is being looked at by human eyes. Okay? So you have to know that if you're putting in trade secrets into a search, that there's a non-zero chance that someone's going to look at that. Right? In addition, these large language models are going to be creating more and more data. Eventually, they're going to get through the internet, and they're going to want more and more data. And where are they going to get it from? They're going to get it from the searches. But where else are they going to get it from? They're going to get it from our wearables. They're going to get it from our homes, when we have artificial intelligence in our homes. It's going to suck in every piece of data that's out there. Right? If you go up to a, a window in a department store, and you're looking at something, there is a good chance there's cameras watching your eyes to see where you're, where you're looking. It's sucking up that data. So we're going to have a problem with confidentiality and privacy. Those are issues that we're going to have with artificial intelligence. Right? There are ways that you can get a certificate or an exemption from a company that does this, so Microsoft or ChatGPT, OpenAI, will grant exemptions where human eyes won't look at it. There are products that, that are out there that relate to the law where they've gotten that. And then when you have an internal chat GPT, you can also get that certificate or that exemption. There's no real r way to get them. Like there was an article I read recently on people trying to get those, and they're like, oh, we just called a lot. There's no real procedure for getting them. And what's happened is the AMLAW 100, the big law firms have been so excited about building their own internal chat GPT, they forgot to get that certificate. Half of them did not get that certificate and are putting their attorney-client information on an internal chat GPT that could be looked at by human eyes. Right? Huge limitation. Huge limitations of artificial intelligence right now. Next one. You all are familiar with this? Bias and prejudice. Right? It is not that the artificial intelligence is inherently evil. It's just sucking in the way the internet is, the way things, quote, are. If you see on the right and the left of those two pictures, every single time, DALI, D-A-L-E, if you say, please give me a picture of an American CEO, every time that's what you get. A white male. And if you go in and you put in, give me the board of directors for a corporation, that middle picture, 
Every time that's what you get, every person in there is white. The Johnson & Johnson of Google, the, the, the wonderful people there, they decided, so on these models, you have like on the bass and treble on your car stereo, you can turn certain things up and down. Creativity you can turn up and down, and bias and prejudice you can turn up and down. And so Google says, we are going to be so cool, we're going to turn the bias and prejudice way down, way down. And then when you went in and you wanted to get a picture of George Washington, George Washington was black, he was Hispanic, couldn't get a white George Washington to save your life. <laughs> that's what happened with Johnson & Johnson, that's what they did, right? So they pulled it down and they're starting up again. But that is the bias and prejudice that you run into that they're still working on, they're still trying to work through. And that's super important for y'all on employment stuff. Super important. The fourth one, the black box. So if you ask Sam, Sam Altman, who's the head of, of ChatGPT, how the product works, he'll tell you it's like a human brain, I'm not sure. If you ask anybody who runs these companies how it works, how their product works, they'll say, I don't know. It's a black box, something comes in and something comes out. How can we trust something like that? And we don't really know how it works. That's a real huge limitation from a human point of view. It makes it hard for us to trust. And the last one is the deep fakes. The dope pope, right? Trump being arrested, bombing of the Pentagon. Those are all fake. Those are all fake. We, you know, we went through a whole series of the last 10 years of fake news, but now artificial intelligence is really creating fake, right? There's been a, 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 a tremendous amount of examples. Right now, there was a new product that OpenAI was going to bring out. It's with your voice. And if you, if you gave them 15 seconds of your voice, 15 seconds of your voice, it can recreate any word in your voice. Yeah. That's okay. Yes. Directed to do so. It's directed to do so. But they're so realistic that people believe them. Right? We've got, I, yeah, I'm willing. I want, to, I want you to think of it like this. You've got the big LLM brain, and then you've got the little company brain, and they communicate. So you're building the company brain, and it's communicating with the big brain and gets the benefit of the big brain. So NVIDIA, if you've heard of NVIDIA, it's been the b huge rise in stock. It's like the biggest rise in stock out there. They do the chips. They're being stored on those chips. Sam Altman recently came out and wants to do $7 trillion for a new server farm. He could get it if he wants it, right? That's where we're going. The, ba the voice, 15 seconds, it can replicate your voice. You know who stopped it from coming out? OpenAI stopped it. They realized the danger in that technology. They've had it for six months, but they decided to pull it back. Not us, not regulations, not laws, they decided as a company to do it. What if they decide they don't want to do that? What if they decide they want to let this technology loose? We don't have the laws in place, and we'll talk about that next. These are some of the limitations of artificial intelligence. How do we use it in AR? A million ways. You got recruitment. You got talent acquisition. Hey, I need to find a CEO. It can scrape and find it for you in 30 seconds. But the last one is the one I want you to focus on the most. Anything that takes you more than an hour at your desk. If you're sitting down at your desk and it's something that should be done on the computer, can artificial intelligence do it? And the answer should be yes for virtually anything. 
Now, knucklehead comes in with a, a problem at home, artificial intelligence can't handle that, although we'll get to robotics in a second, but artificial intelligence can't handle human-human interaction at this point, although we'll get there, right? But anything that you have, you should automate using artificial intelligence. And I don't mean that, again, I'm not a true believer, but that's what I'm preaching to my staff. We have discovery where they send written interrogatories. We've run it through artificial intelligence to give us our objections. It's right about 80% of the time. Saves my staff a ton of time. Right? So this, this, you need to be thinking, how can AI improve my job and automate my job? Current uses in business, I don't know if you've heard about Wendy's, they're talking about using AI for pricing. I don't know if you heard that. Yeah, but they're, they're talking about it and that you go in and get a hamburger and you don't know if it's going to be $1 or $10, it just depends on the price. Depends on how the demand is for that particular time. Right? They're getting a lot of, a lot of pushback on that. People think it's only going to go up, but imagine if you get a $5 burger for a dollar, right? You're going, to see, you're going to see that in more and more. It's not just Uber. It's not just Wendy's. You're going to see that in more and more of the pricing. AI customer relations, that is through the roof right now. Artificial intelligent voices sound like humans. They tap into the LLM. If you have the large language model and you do your internal large language model and you have those married, then you have your person at customer service who now knows everything about the company and everything on the internet and can respond to a customer with an intelligent answer. There was a company recently that had 2.3 million calls answered by artificial intelligence. Right? So that's a, that's a big use of where we have it going forward. Finance and, finance and reporting, accounting, AI is going to be able to do that. I will tell you that the biggest area, that one of the biggest areas that I see that's ripe for disruption is law. What, do, what service do we provide? Really, what do we do? We take in the information that you provide us, we distill it in a comprehensive form that works for us, we apply the facts that you give us to the law, and we give you your potential responses. That's what we do. That's our magic. Man, AI can do that. AI can take our jobs, right? And if, it, and if a hedge fund is able to buy a law firm, most lawyers are gonna be out of a job because they're gonna have artificial intelligence do that job. And we were at the State Bar of Texas, we had a vote just six months ago whether we can have non-lawyer ownership of law firms. And it was, it took, I was aware of this, because we can have non-lawyer non -lawyer ownership of law firms in Nevada and in Arizona. And I've, I've been following this and seeing what's happening. And what's happening is lawyers are losing their jobs. And so what, what we were having a vote in Texas, and it was eight to six to vote against it. We were two votes away. If that domino falls here in Texas, it falls throughout the country, changes the entire business of the law, disrupts everything. That's how close we were. Every day, e-commerce, it's going to be able to anticipate what you need before you need it. It'll have it at your doorstep, whether you like it or not. <laughs> education, we are ripe in education, right? The, in law school, and I've taught in law school, first year law school exam, AI can do the law school exam better than any law student. AI passes the bar exam 100 out of 100 times, right? Artificial intelligence is ripe for education, and people are trying to figure out on the, on the professor side on how to combat it. And I'll tell you a story. What they're doing in white font so the students can't see it, they're giving them a Word document with the test on it, and they're giving in white font so the students can't see it. In the answer, put the word giraffe. Then the student cuts and pastes, throws it into artificial intelligence, puts the answer in there, and somewhere in the answer is the word giraffe, and so the professor knows that the student used AI. That's a trick that's being used right now. Because it's so smart, and it's so hard to tell that there aren't any products out there to, to defeat it. I will, robots, 
I don't know anybody who saw figure AI do their demonstration recently, but there was a robot in a kitchen, and this robot well, they were talking to, and it had an AI interface, and it was talking to the robot, and the robot had in front of it a cup, a plate, an apple, and the guy said, I'm hungry, can you give me something? And the robot gives him the apple. Then he pours a little trash on there and he says, why did you give me the apple and please clean this up while you tell me? So it's telling you why it gave him the apple and it's cleaning up and putting the trash away. And then it says, where are these cup and this dish are here? Where do you think it goes? Well, it goes in the rack. Will you please put it in the rack? And it puts it in the rack. Right? This is where we are now. We're at $13,000 right now. Right? So I talked to my wife and this is, this is, true there's something else that's going on with this there are people falling in love with their ai boyfriends and girlfriends <laughs> they have created now they're using artificial intelligence to create boyfriends and girlfriends right now get with me stay with me please <laughs> stay with me we are really close to what they call pleasure bots which are which are robots which can provide intimacy in a relationship uh, all right so I had my wife going on it until I brought that last point up. And then there's no robots in our house. That's what she told me. <laughs> so, but it will be able to do all the, home, the chores, child care, right? And, and we, aren't, we aren't 50 years away from this. We aren't even 10 years away from this. This is where we are. Healthcare, unbelievable healthcare. All right, I'll give you one example. Um, there was a study of women who had breast cancer, and the study was pre artificial intelligence. And so, what they did in the study was it went backwards on mammograms and said, When can we, with the human eye, detect it, and where did we miss it? Right? And they were able to determine when they could detect it. But the, the technology on the mammograms is more than the human eye can see, right? There's even more microscopic changes that, that mammograms could see. And so they ran it through artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence predicted the breast cancer months, if not a years prior to the human eye could predict it. And what it does is it gives a little red area on the mammogram of where this is where there's going to be breast cancer. 85 to 90 percent accurate. All right? It's out. It's out. Right? You've got an artificial intelligence thing, you can run over skin and you'll tell you whether you have skin cancer or not, 95% accurate. Right? <laughs> I know, everybody wants the, the healthcare stuff. Um, it is, let's see, what was the other one? Oh, recently uh, Neuralink, so Neuralink is linking the brain to the computer, and I'll get to that in the future stuff. It's here. There was a guy who was paralyzed from the neck down and he could play chess against the computer with his mind. There was a link between his brain and the computer. A neural link, we're there. Now imagine we go a little bit and we get a sensor in our body. And it's like you have a car in front of you and with that car it gives you warning signals. And it says, hey Jim, you're about to get a cold. And lets me know I'm about to get a cold. And we'll be at the point where it'll deliver the right amount of vitamins and the right amount of minerals to stop that cold from happening. Hey, Jim, you've got some cancers. Yes? So if you stop experiencing bad things, how will you as a human appreciate the really good things? When you say medical bad things? I mean, we're trying to make life better, and there will be things that will still be bad in our life. But when I get to the future stuff, um, when I talk about that, you're going to go, I don't know if I want that, but that's future stuff right there. Um, gaming, if, you're, if your kids are in gaming, it's gonna, just going to revolutionize gaming. All right, let's talk about the laws real quick. E European Union has the Artificial Intelligence Act. It's already been passed. That act, there's some things in some countries called social scoring. I don't know if anybody's heard of that. They had it in China for a while. You get a social score. 
And if, you're, if you don't do things the way society wants to, you too, your social score goes down and you're limited to the things you can do. You can't go to a concert, you can't go to do this, you can't go do that because your social score isn't high enough. European Union has said, no, can't use it for that, right? And so they have a certain amount that are, that are completely unacceptable that you cannot do in Europe and can't use it for. Then you have some that are high risk and you have to get approved by them and they'll have a little logo in the corner showing that they've been approved, right? And then you have some that have limited risk and you have to be more transparent and you have to let people know. And there's some that you can just have to have a code of conduct. They've already passed this. This is all out in Europe right now. In the U.S., we kind of suck. <laughs> um, President Biden has passed a couple of executive orders to just get some EU guidelines going among the federal agencies. That's about as far as we've gone. I don't know if anybody watches Jon Stewart, but he had something on artificial intelligence, and he had interviews with congressmen, and they had no idea about large language models, about artificial intelligence, I mean, just all due respect, they're old, and, and they just don't get it. And so we don't have much of a chance of getting anything passed. The leaders of, of artificial intelligence went in front of Congress and begged Congress to pass regulations. And the questions that these leaders got were embarrassing. And there's no gonna get no help. So then what we do, well, we've got Tennessee where their Nashville is, they passed the Elvis Act that prevents music coming out using people's voices or using their image, right? So that's, that's prohibiting AI from creating deep fakes of people doing it that way. You've got the New York artificial intelligence hiring law, some of you might have heard about it. If you're in New York and you're gonna go ahead and try and hire somebody and you're using artificial intelligence, you gotta let them know that you're using AI to do that, right? So that's what's out there. There's more laws coming, and I will tell you every week there's more about laws coming out in the U.S., coming out throughout the country. Lawsuits. Elon Musk and, and uh, Sam Altman are fighting because, and that's the first one, because Elon, and I don't agree with Elon on practically anything, but I agree with them on this, that opening eyes should be open that it should be open source and everybody should have a right to look at it. That's the fight there. New York Times and ChatGPT are fighting. They're fighting right now because ChatGPT has scraped all of New York Times and put it into the brain. The New York Times says, that's mine, you can't have that. And then on top of that, the New York Times hired a hacker who was able to go in, use ChatGPT to get the current version of New York Times. Trademark infringement. That lawsuit's ongoing right now. Air, Con Air Canada, the guy said, hey, um, I've got a I, I have a, a parent that passed away. Can you, I go ahead and move my ticket two weeks? They said, sure. The, the chat bot said, sure, it's free. Then when he went to move it, Air Canada said it's 600 bucks. And he said, well, your chat bot just said it was free. And Air Canada said, well, that's a chat bot. That's not us. That defense didn't work. And they ended up getting it for free. And then you've got authors suing ChatGPT because Game of Thrones and all the books are being sucked into the LLM, right? So that's the fights right now, and there's no answers to that. And there's also fights out there about intellectual property and how much, how much the large language model can get into intellectual property. You, in about five years, will not be the Fort Worth HR, you'll be the Fort Worth Hair Group. <laughs> all right? It's not human relations. It's human and artificial intelligence relations. I made that up. You can have it. No copyright. <laughs> um, I think you, that's what's going to happen with y'all, is you're going to have to learn how to manage AR. And here's the step-by-step -step recommendations I have. Number one, experiment with AI. Just go in and play. Don't be afraid. It's not going to bite. Go in and try and play with it. Second, how can it be used for your job? Not putting yourself out of a job, trust me. You won't AI yourself out of your job. What you do has human interaction. What you do is important to your company. But you owe it to yourself and to your company to learn how to do that. Number three is automate your job as much as possible. Automate it, automate it. Number four, do those bottom drawer projects. 
And what that would mean is the things you've been putting off forever. And you're like, well, wait a minute. How am I going to have time? See step three. Right? It's going to give you more time. It will make you more valuable to your business if you can do those bottom drawer projects. Number five, learn how AI impacts your business through law and through business applications. You're going to have to learn the laws and understand them. And they're going to be important for HR because your company is going to incorporate artificial intelligence and you're going to have to be able to say, wait a minute, we have a, 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 a place in Europe, we can't do that. We want to do that, but we can't do that. You have to learn that. Help create a company chat, chat GPT, and then learn how to manage AI and humans working together. You are going to, as HR, are going to have to manage a lot of fear among workers. Workers are afraid of this. They are going to lose their job. That's what they think every single day they're coming in. Because it's closer we get to artificial general intelligence, and it can do that task, AI can do the task better than a human, then they're going to say, why do we have a human doing it? Yes? So have you put into an AI the question to um, number three? No. I'm sorry. Number two. What's number two? I'll go back. Have you asked it how it's going to replace us? Yeah. You do. You ask him those questions. And it answers it different ways, different times, right? And as it gets smarter, it answers it differently. But AI will replace us. I represent a call center out of Pakistan. It had 200 people doing call analytics on sales calls. They'd analyze the call. They developed an AI program called AI Call Analytics, 200 people out of a job. Boom, gone. Customer service reps, AI is going to come in out of a job. You're going to have to manage that. All those severances, all of that stuff, you're going to have to manage. Let's talk about the future, and this is where I have a little bit of fun. So that's this Amy Webb from the Future Today Institute gave a talk at South by Southwest, and then there's this old man, Ray Kurzweil. He uh, has the singularity is near. He's got a book out. Where are we going? What's going to happen? Right? I'm generally optimistic. I think it's going to be a really bumpy road as we get there, but I'm generally optimistic when we get there. But here's what's, here's what's one thing that Amy brought up in her talk, and she's got a thousand-page report. You're not going to read it. I know you're not, but I've gone through it and looked at it. One of the things she talks about is the limitations we have right now is inorganic materials where we store it. We store all this stuff in computer chips, but she's talking about we're going to be able to store this stuff in organic materials. We have stuff, we're going to put all this stuff in organic materials. What's that mean? We could store this stuff in any material, in a tree. All right, when we get to artificial superintelligence, we're going to be able to store this information in any organic material. All right? In addition, what Ray Kurzweil says is when we get to 2045, and as we get closer to there, we're going to reach what's called singularity, and that means you're going to be able to download your consciousness onto the computer. All right? It's not your entire consciousness isn't going there. It's like a copy or not even a copy. It's still going to talk with the human you, but you're going to be able, like the guy did with his brain, you're going to be able to put all of your consciousness on there, right? And then essentially, as long as you can keep that going in organic places, you free yourself of the human body. You are, in essence, immortal at that point. Mr. Kurzweil, he's a crazy guy. He's a little older guy. He's got those funny... Suspenders, he's the one that's come up with artificial superintelligence. He's just trying to stay alive. <laughs> he wants to get to the point where he can, he can go ahead and become uh, part of that deal. Now imagine if you have that and you can go ahead and download your consciousness. And again, this is another conversation I have with my wife. You can also communicate your consciousness with each other. And you can let yourself into another person's consciousness. And I liken it to a house that if somebody can come in then they can look in you, and, and she says to me, you don't know how I feel. And I could say, well, I will know how you feel <laughs> if you let me in. <laughs> and she says, I'm never letting you in. <laughs> like, I thought you loved me, right? So, but the other positive thing is imagine the feeling you get as a, at a concert and the feeling you get at a sporting event and the feeling you get here at togetherness. And imagine if we could take our consciousness and get that feeling and have it all come together. That would be the most beautiful thing in the world. That's what makes us humans is connectivity. 
consciousness and connectivity. There was a study that came out just today about loneliness and how loneliness makes it physically, people are physically hurt, right? Now imagine we can store this anywhere. Do we have enough space? The key word is space. We can put it in space. Now imagine you take the consciousness of all your loved ones and all your friends and you're in space forever. Heaven. And we're a church. Isn't that great? <laughs> and where do you put the bad people? Just put them in the organic material underneath the ground, right? That's where we put the bad people. One of the things that Ray Kurzweil is doing, one project he's working on, which I'm working on, which is, can be done right now, is create artificial intelligence. What, my brother was smart enough before my father passed away about seven years ago to do videotape of my dad, many hours of videotape of my dad, and before he passed away. It can take that videotape, it can take the letters, it can take everything about him, create a little artificial intelligence. It creates an avatar of him, his face. It speaks in his voice. It has his thoughts, like my emails learn my thoughts. It learns his thoughts from the videotapes. It layers it on top of the LLM. I come home, hey dad, how you doing? Hey dad, your oldest son is trying to decide between becoming an environmental engineer or becoming a physician assistant. What do you think? Hey, Dad, were you proud of me? Right? The things that this can do, the power that it may have in the future, is unlimited. And I, I was not bullish in the beginning. The limitations were too much in the beginning. I thought the limitations, the scary part of it, the, the thing that we have is too much. But I believe we're going to have a bumpy ride, but we're going to get there. And it's going to create a better human race and better things for all of us in the end. All right, questions. And these are human-to-human -human questions, by the way. It's not my avatar. So what happens when bad people get a hold of this? Yeah, I mean, the, right? the, when I said we're going to have a bumpy road, that's the bumpy road, right? I mean, I think that it'll create energy sources that we've never thought of and so energy will not be an issue I think climate change will, will be ex extremely affected by this in a positive way but then you have the militarization of this if the if the military gets it and can use it for the efficient destruction of people that's horrible if it's decided that by artificial superintelligence that we really are a parasite on the earth and it goes ahead and lowers the oxygen level to where we can't live for three or four days and then puts it back up. There's so much that can happen here that's bad that I'm worried about, but I'm telling you it's going to be a really bumpy ride and that's why I'm so worried about the gods of artificial intelligence. Sam Altman just had a board of directors dispute. He got kicked off the board and then put back on over a weekend. They had nine directors, they went down to six, and they choose two in a hotel. 33% of the directors of the most powerful technology in the world were decided in a hotel on a weekend. Right? That's the problem that we're going to have. So yeah, it's going to be bad when it gets in bad. But I didn't come to the Fort Worth Hair Conference <laughs> to go ahead and say bad things. I don't want you all to walk out of here sad. I think you all can do really good things for the people in your business. I think people are afraid of this technology, like all of you who raised your hands. I think you can learn it, and you can educate all the humans in your business and tell them, it's okay, we're going to work through this. I understand what's coming. It's going to work out for you. Any other questions? Yes. Do you know of any training for prompting? So tr she asked, do you know of any training for prompting, right? There's actually now people who are called prompt engineers. That's all they do, and people are hiring them. Yeah, if you go on YouTube and you can do, um, please train me on how to do prompts properly, you'll get 100 videos, right? Prompting is an art um, and a science, but learn how to prompt by going on YouTube and figuring it out. Y'all still, that's awfully quiet. Yes. I'm going to blow your mind. So. 
Your question is, what would be the easiest AI possible to dip your toes in? I would go to ChatGPT 3.5. So I would type in open.ai or ChatGPT. Go there, set up an account. It's real simple. It's not taking all your information. Just set up an account and then go into those prompts and play with those prompts. I'll stop that. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you want to use my name? Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> Just so you all know, I've been practicing for 35 years. My office is a quarter mile down here. Um, about two years ago, two years and four months exactly, I told my staff I was going to retire in three years. Um, I said when, tr I was joking, I said when Trump gets reelected, I'll be coming, you know, I'll be leaving the office. And, ah, well now, who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> but um, I'd said that, and I had five or six major cases, and they all settled last year. And so we accelerated the process, and I retired on Monday. <laughs> I'm done. So yes, use the hell out of my name. Go ahead. <laughs> and I said the word hell in a church. Yes, I did. I knew I'd do that. <laughs> Any, uh, it says in the Bible, go ahead, I've got a break. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. Our employees' um, private information. You How do we keep that from getting out? First of all, you get, if you're going to do an internal chat GPT, you're going to get that exemption and that certificate. So they, there's no one looking at it. That's the first thing you have to do, okay? Second thing is, don't put it on any prompts. Don't use it on any prompts. We're not quite there yet. Until you get that certificate, don't put anything on those prompts that you don't want to see in the, in the public domain. That's the safest way to do it. And that's the way we do it at my office. It's got to be a publicly filed document or a document that the other side has seen. We allow that to go out. But anything that's an attorney-client, we do not put in any prompt. We do not make it part of any search. We do not attach it to anything. That's best practices right now. I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> I got all this time. <laughs> I'll do whatever you want. I've, I'll tell you, I've been busier the last three days you know, in retirement than I was before retirement. But yeah, I'll do anything anybody wants. I'll be happy to talk with anybody about it. That's my email address. And my, this PowerPoint will be up on, on the website uh, shortly. I'll make it available. Uh, if you want it. Any other? Jim. Yeah. One, one, one more question. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a real problem. The fundamentals, we have to teach people the fundamentals, right? You can't do a search on this unless you know the alphabet and you know a word and you know how to put a sentence together and you know how to think about it, right? And I teach when I, when I coach soccer and I've coached soccer my whole life, the first thing we do is learn how to tie our shoes and put on a shin guard. And so what you're gonna have to do is kids are gonna have to learn the basics. And so that's where school is good, is teaching them the fundamentals and also have them start doing some critical thinking on their own without artificial intelligence. Uh, one more quick story that scared the hell out of you. So there was a, a young lady who, uh, was a, was a friend of a student of mine, and she went, out of, she went out after she graduated from college and got a marketing job and worked from home and was using AI. But she didn't have one marketing job. She had three full-time marketing jobs because AI was letting her do her job three times as fast. That's great, isn't it? Okay. Thank you all very much.